Yeah, yesterday they announced some new innovations at Bentley. Um, there was a lot of innovation. Um, but I'd like to really, I suppose, highlight some of the really key ones that we, we saw yesterday and especially applicable to um, my markets that I look after um, in government and water and wastewater utilities. So the first one was context capture. So the, the announcement of the availability of context capture for Bentley, which is the comes from the acquisition of Acute 3D, a French company. And really, context capture um, looks at creating reality meshes out of existing conditions by um, using photogrammetry techniques for such things as uh, drones to survey um, buildings and um, asset information, infrastructure, and capturing that um, through a set of photographs, piecing them together, overlaying them um, into a, a series of photographs, um, automating that through our context capture engine, and out of that comes a very realistic 3D m mesh or model um, of that uh, existing condition. Um, it's a really exciting uh, development for us because what it's enabling is um, us to capture the reality of a situation um, in far more detail and uh, enables much more accessibility to, to for general consumption. And really, it's used, we're applying it to engineering workflows. So the, the capture of that, um, uh, let's say it's a city, uh, a, a building within a city, uh, making sure that it's semantically rich as a model as opposed to just being a standalone model that can you know represent something is actually enabling the engineering workflows to come through um, right through our other applications such as microstations so uh, it's a pretty exciting development for us um, and we're really excited um, to be using that for yeah so it's combining a a, 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 a few pieces of technology for us and it's um, the interesting thing about open utilities I think is ensuring that the the layer of geospatial element that we have um, is fundamental to this release of the software so um, it's going to make sure that there are no open loop business workflows um, existing for those people that want to design and map networks for their utilities underground assets um, and it's going to provide a much more integrated approach to what was before um, sometimes a bit disconnected in the field so they can actually manage and map their network um, in a far more integrated manner now with this Open Utilities product release. The utilities market um, has a challenge and the, one of the challenges for utilities is that a lot of the things are underground. So how do we get access, how do we get uh, engineering accuracy to those engineering networks that we need to make sure that we are delivering quality service to the end user. So part of that, you know, we talked about context capture, capturing the reality, but part of that is making sure that what the, the, the field engineers are working on or what the, um, the people in the office are working on is engineering accuracy. So making sure that they, they can map and model their networks to a degree of um, quality that is making sure that the, the end product and the service and the quality is made sure it's not, not compromised by this. So it's really improving this integration between various bits of technology to deliver a better service. Context Capture is a sort of new acquisition for us and we recognise its potential um, but we also recognise the potential to use it with other applications throughout our broad po portfolio of products. So let's take MicroStation for an, as an example, it's our flagship modelling application, it's very well known in the industry and what we wanted to try and do was, you know, could we import that into MicroStation and um, start simulating uh, new uh, models into this, these designs. So you've got an uh, existing capture of a city. What about if I put a, a, a building or an asset in that city and what are the um, potential um, risks or concerns that maybe the public might have with that building? Does it cast a shadow over other parts of the building, uh, of, of the city? Um, what are the effects of perhaps sunlight coming in? So then you start adding in our Luminar-T products which create virtual environments. So what happens when the sunlight is coming through the windows? Is this a problem for, for the office, people in the office? So you're getting around to real detail of first-person simulation almost. Um, but you want to make sure these models are semantically rich with all the right information. And I think it's important that geospatial, uh, we always have a geo context to all of these models as well. So um, we want to make sure that they always have uh, up-to-date information about where they are located. So the assets need to be um, geolocated as well.
the government sector is a, is a diverse um, offering that we have. We probably like to say we have solutions for government rather than a government solution because um, it is diverse. I have a different offering focus in North America as I do to Australia, as I do to Singapore. Um, and India is a very good example of perhaps where our offering is focused on industry trends and um, smart cities being one of those objectives that we're really focusing on because we understand that it is being uh, driven by the government and all these initiatives to increase or improve in existing infrastructure and build new infrastructure in a smarter um, manner is, is really important to us. So it is diverse and it is needs to be focused within that region. Um, so we're really looking forward to you know putting our, off, our government offering out there in, um, in India next year. Um, we'll do a lot of activity around that and making sure they understand that our capabilities and our software actually um, enable the smarter cities um, for India as you, you, you look to meet those objectives. There were a couple that I would pick out, uh, so they haven't presented them, so I don't... It, it always changes when they get up on stage sure. and present them, and often you see the real passion behind these projects. I had a great example last year of Ordnance Survey, who, <clears throat> who their project, they called it their baby. So they were working on it for seven years, and as soon as they stood up on stage, you could see that this was, you know, this is what they lived for, their, for the last seven years in, in infrastructure. Um, I'm really excited about the AECOM project in the water network uh, analysis category. I, I, I might be wrong in saying, but I think that they're the first company in India to be really focusing on BIM, right? So BIM is a process and not as a product. So BIM, BIM is sometimes misrepresented as a product, but it's actually a process. And they're going through a process of taking um, BIM models into operations to improve the network of water distribution. It's absolutely fascinating, and I can't wait to sit on, on that project. The other one um, I'm very interested in is the Singapore Land Authority. And they're actually looking at creating their world's first 3D cadaster for a nation. This is so. This is a whole nation. I, I know it's a small nation, but still, what they're trying to achieve is is pretty remarkable. So they're going to model their entire city in 3D. And to do this, they have to create over 200 200,000 city models, which is a huge feat of work. But what they'll get from that data um, is an incredible set of uh, information that they can share with multiple benefactors for planning, operational management, and you know various different reasons but it's it's an incredible feat um, and they'll really be the flagship for any other country trying to, to replicate and do the same so those are probably my two picks this year